A federal court declared panhandling to be a constitutional right last summer. Since then, you've started seeing them in Grand Rapids, but more recently, they've spread to the suburbs like Cascade, Walker, Cutlerville. But what are the stories behind those cardboard signs? That's what I wanted to find. I find it very annoying that they're at every exit. I sometimes lock my doors. I don't make eye contact. There are no prerequisites for this job. All you need is a marker. Right, hey, here's like five, ten bucks. Some cardboard and an idea for a slogan to really sell your story. I'm actually trying to get money so I can go look for it. Down. Make your best money in the rain. Really? Because people see you standing in the rain, yes, and they. They figure that you really need it bad if you're standing in the rain. Panhandlers we surveyed make an average of $20 an hour. Yep, 20 bucks an hour. And that could be me tomorrow. And like Janelle. Thank you. Many of them are, you guessed it, not homeless. Well, I wish that they knew that I had to have surgery and I can't get a job right now until after I have my surgery. Then I can get a job and go to work, you know? Mm -hmm. But they don't know that, so I just ignore their comments. This man says he needs more money to take care of his friend. This man for food. Excuse me. But really, how truthful are their signs? This man says he's homeless. We watched him make dollar after dollar in Kentwood, standing outside the mall for a few hours. Then he tossed the sign in the back of his van. We tracked him to this house, but our panhandler didn't come to the door. His mom did. He uses my van, but he doesn't live here. What, what makes you think he lived here? Is he homeless? I don't know, but he doesn't live here, all I can tell you. Then there's Ruby. Whoa. Ruby works a high traffic downtown corner on Pearl Street off 131 with a sign that reads homeless vet. The yellow, get a job. Maybe he's saluted you on your way to work. God bless. Hey, God bless you, brother. Maybe you thanked him for his service. Have a nice weekend. But Rudy is not telling you the truth. Do you feel bad lying to people, telling them you're a vet when you're not a vet? Um, no, yeah, no way. You do, but you still do it. Right. Got to make some money somehow. You know, it's better than, than, than um, robbing people or dealing drugs, as far as I'm concerned. And if you weren't doing this, you, you would be doing that? No. Rudy does use some of his money for food. Show me what you bought. Uh, these are oh, for okay. me. I drink bush. But he says I'm he drinks good. most of the cash this, away. This will knock your dick in the dirt. An alcoholic since the age of 13. This man just told me he's not actually a vet. Do you regret giving him money? Yeah, but people need money. People need help. Yeah, you can spend it whatever he wants to on it. You know okay. I mean? It's just my gift to him. The veteran shtick earns Rudy a bonus on holidays like July 4th. Typical gifts of a few singles turn into tens and twenties. This one lady, she gave me a $20 bill. She said, I'm so proud of you. And I said, well, thank you. You didn't feel bad when she said that to you? No. Happy I got some drink tonight. Rudy is homeless. $29. $29? Yeah, that's slow. He meets his fellow homeless panhandlers here after their two to three hour shifts. We live up here. We have a good time. We get drunk every day. Make our money. The routine goes panhandle. He made a fortune today. Pool the cash. Oh, you're buying the beers. I'm buying the beers. Are you out of cigarettes? Then it's off to the liquor store. Come on, fly. They taught me all their tricks and techniques. You gotta look them in the eye. You gotta get this big dumb grin on you. Plus, some street talk. Road dogs are panhandlers you work the corners with. And we watch out for each other's back. Each cash gift is called a lift. <laughs> Now, we don't want you to think that all of these people are lying to you. Some really are in desperate situations and honestly need help. I live in the woods. Kurt is a regular on Division in 44. I, I am hurting. You can see the tears in my eyes right now. Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't know where to go. He says he's depressed. He has no hopes, goals, dreams. He will live this life until the day he dies. I want to die soon. No. Yes. No. Why would you want to die? Why would I want to do this forever? Similar to the panhandlers we met, Kurt does not want help from a shelter. Even if panhandling becomes illegal, 
He would rather starve than go. Oh yeah, 8.1%. Rudy and his friends are the opposite. We're gonna have a good time this afternoon. If they can't panhandle, they can't drink. Only then would they consider going to a shelter for help. We've never got chased off. see us all the time. Yeah, we've never got chased off. Until then, you can find them hanging out here in a Nabuan park every afternoon, drinking until they pass out. Ah, thank you, Rudy. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome, brother. Then waking up and doing it all over again. Our goal with this story isn't to tell you you should or should not give money to a panhandler. That's your own decision. But you should ask yourself each time, is this the most productive way to give? We talked with the homeless shelters and they all suggest you do not give them money. But if you want to give them something, buy them a meal instead. Tonight, the story of a homeless man whose bloody body was found early this morning in Grand Rapids and the arrest in this case. Our coverage tonight is not just about one person's death. We want to put a human face on this story because WZZM 13 knew the man. His name is Steve, and we featured him earlier this week on our 13 on your side watchdog report on panhandling in Grand Rapids. Now, immediately police have told us his death is in no way connected to our report done by WZZM 13's Hannah Saunders, who joins me now. We're going to show you the final words of his life. Take a look. We live up here, we have a good time, we get drunk every day, we make our money. Steve was rarely sober. It was the only way he could hold on to some happiness living in these conditions. I used to have two Jaguars and a three-story house. Wow, what happened? Drank it away. Drank away the wife, drank away the job. His street nickname was The Fly. He panhandled in downtown Grand Rapids almost every day to pay for his food, cigarettes, and booze. I've been homeless about six years now. Okay. Here in Grand Rapids all the yep. time? In and out of programs, homeless, in a program, homeless. He would get help with his addiction, but sobriety never stuck. It became such a deep-rooted problem over decades, and he could not stop it by himself. So is this how you're going to live the rest of your life? I don't know. I don't see any other way. I, d I don't have any hope. Taking my spot, I don't like it. It's becoming a cluster. Buddy, this is my corner. Panhandlers drawing territory lines. I've been here for a month and a half. Drivers feeling unsafe. So I asked them to both step away from my vehicle at that point. One was just standing there, and then the second one approached him while I was actually handing him money. I ain't gonna run. Luckily, I had just dropped my daughter off. There's two signs out here. Nobody's getting no money. Without a physical fight, don't bother calling police if this happens to you. This is legal. This is freedom of speech. That's cool, dog. <laughs> Thanks to James Speet. Thank you. God bless you. This summer, he and the ACLU won their case against the state and city of Grand Rapids. Now, any ban on panhandling in Michigan is unconstitutional. Well, you should work three minimum wage jobs like I do, 84 hours a week. I've been in every business down here, all the way up. Pass them all. You're watching Speed's first 15 minutes back on a corner after taking a break from panhandling during the lawsuit. His settlement, $6,000. I got a place now, so I got a little bit more on my feet. But still, it's hard for him to resist the kind of money he makes flying a sign. Thank you. God bless you. In these 15 minutes alone, Thank you. God bless you. $30. So you'll do this for the rest of your life whenever you need to? Yeah, it's my constitutional right. Why not? I'm not breaking no law. Now that Speed is back to his routine, the case settled, the city of Grand Rapids is preparing a new plan. We are back at the drawing board. Mayor George Hartwell wants to find a way to deal with some of these issues brought about by panhandling, including safety, but without overstepping the freedom of speech. So we're looking at what other cities have done right now. We're studying other ordinances. Other cities, mostly near Detroit, have crafted ordinances to limit issues they found with panhandlers without directly banning panhandling. Instead, they've utilized their right to put a limit on the time of day, place, or manner in which people can ask for money. The real important distinction is that you can punish conduct, but you cannot 
punish speech. Miriam Ackerman of the American Civil Liberties Union represented Speet and promises to be watching Grand Rapids every step of the way, just as she's been reviewing the policies of other cities. Well, we recently wrote to over uh, 80 communities, including many communities in West Michigan, um, to advise them that they had ordinances on the books um, that were unconstitutional. It's not for the ACLU to determine if the laws are unconstitutional. That's up to the courts. But Ackerman says most of those ordinances are outdated and too broad. What they can't do is punish speech. Another option is to put a law on the books against fraudulent panhandling. It would be difficult for police to enforce unless they ran into someone outright admitting it. Whoa. But then again, it wasn't difficult for us to find Rudy. Hey, God bless you, brother. Do you feel bad lying to people, telling them you're a vet when you're not a vet? Um, no, yeah, no way. So far in West Michigan, one city has implemented a begging law within these guidelines. We, we were proactive in, in, in developing an ordinance that would help us deal with that issue before it became a problem. No one is allowed to ask for money at certain places in Kentwood, charities included. Like a public restroom, you know, where the person might not be able to readily get away from somebody. So, you know, in those specific areas under specific circumstances, it wouldn't be allowed in Kentwood. Also included street corners. See how empty they are? You cannot interfere with traffic. And now panhandlers like Speed stick to the other sides of the city limits, mostly in Wyoming and Grand Rapids, to avoid a ticket or arrest. That's what I'm telling you, Switch. He's taken on a new role now, legal counselor to his fellow panhandlers. If you don't know, you're going to get hemmed up. He'll pass along some free advice he's learned from his time in court. All right, Jay. As long as they get off his corners. Thank you. God bless you. When he wants to panhandle.